Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, it's gotten worse in here. I need to clean up. But I wanted to record this because um, this is about my employment status. And I think it's really important because I have a little bit of fear. The last place that um, I worked, I did get a job. I worked for one day. Well, technically, let me tell you what happened. I worked for two days last week. <laughs> this is what happened. Um, a lot of times, the places that I go to look for jobs um, are places where I can pretty much get a job really quick. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that a lot of times when you're doing this, when you're trying to get a job fast like that, the jobs are unscrupulous jobs. Um, and sometimes they put on a real good front and have good, good front people and things like that. But they're still unscrupulous jobs nonetheless. And um, I'm going to say this because um, I've been in situations when I was younger and I didn't realize it. But they what they would do is they would take somebody that's marketable like a lot of us are when we're young. And what they'll do is they'll put you as a person that's an HR or someone that does the interviewing and hiring. And the reason why is because people don't tend to ask that many questions if they, um, why is it so dark in here? If they feel that, um, you, it is really dark in here. If they feel that you, um, that, you know, you're young and you're straight out of school, that the world is working appropriately like it should. Um, I wasn't aware of this at first, but let me tell you. So last Wednesday, I went on this interview for this job. I need a job real quick. Um, I have this whole mm. process, as y'all know about how I'm up, um, applying for the jobs and being aware, you know, I still need a job. So being aware of what I'm getting into when I go into it. So I make sure from the very first contact, the ad, you know, talking to the person on the phone to set up the interview that I know who I'm talking to, how long they've been working there, et cetera, et cetera. So for this particular job, my concern, I have a, a fraud concern with this. I'm going to tell you why. Now, this particular job, just so many things didn't match up. But when I first talked to the person, everything seemed great. Um, was the person professional? Um, did they seem like they were receptive to me and my skills? Did they seem like, you know, just mm. professional? And so in the the situation, you know, everything on the phone checked out good. When I went on the interview, everything seemed great. But then I sold myself short because during the process where I had my opportunity to ask questions, and it's always important to ask questions, you guys, um, really important you want to know the legal name of the business you know ask them you know this could be something simple like how long have you all, you all been in business are you registered with the better business bureau we all know the better business bureau doesn't mean anything but that gives you an opening to say well who are you i mean how are you are you listed what name are you listed under with the better business bureau you know um the drawback with that is that a lot of these places with the quick jobs they're like sales places like vacation sales and things like that and they're just kind of shady from the top but so anyways so this company um you know i like i said i need a job immediately and i was just like oh this would be great because then i'll be able to have the funds to secure a roof over my head mm -hmm. you know because what will happen is that you know i'll get paid i would have gotten paid this past friday well today i would have gotten paid today and i would have gotten paid the next week you know and that would have been enough for me to manage um a roof so um basically i went into the first day that you go there's a training during the training process uh it was just alarming to me the new hire paperwork that you would normally fill out and the bad thing about it is that it was a contract job but they had a tablet and they would make you complete everything on a tablet there was like 30 pages of legal documents okay that you were supposed to complete on the tablet and you're under pressure because it's in a quote unquote training class. So you don't really have, I tried my best to read all of the stuff to make sure there was nothing too crazy. But the thing is you're under pressure because then what happens is that you're holding up the rest of the class. And so, you know, there's people that are, you know, again, different types of people. There was one, the other people in the class was somebody that was in a drug program. Most of these people are from homeless shelters or drug places and just things like that. You know, they have some type of, history where they can't get a real job so yours truly but so what happened was um in the class that i was in there was one person from a you know drug treatment homeless place there was another guy i don't know where he was from but he was young and really belligerent 
and he reminded me of one of the Jersey Boy people. Then there was a lady that was from um, South Florida, and again, just real street, the white girl. Everybody was white except me. Real street kind of, and um, you know, her thing was that she didn't have to work before because she was a housewife, is what she said. And then me, you know, and you know, as I'm reading through the thing, the guy, the young guy, was like, <sighs> you know, you know what I mean, just like. But as you were looking through the documents, what killed me was that you do the electronic signature the, f the first time or whatever. And I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. I've never done this before, but they're going to give me a copy of this. They're going to email me a copy for sure. Never emailed me a copy. I asked them for it specifically. They said they would never, ever email me a copy. Then on top of that, um, what happens is that you're representing yourself as this company. But they, and my question was because... One of my first questions when I do the phone call is, you know, try to get the company name because a lot of times in these quick jobs, they don't give you the company name and you could work there and not never know the company name. Okay, so, um, so the first day is all training. That's how the training kind of went down. And then what scared me was that when you filled out the paperwork, and you put the e-signature one time, when you go to the next pages, you just hit a button and it automatically fills everything. So your information is not secure. Anybody could take some document, create a document, and autofill your signature in it. And I never got a copy of mine. And at the end of the training class, I asked him, I said, you know, when can I expect to receive a copy? Oh, when they process everything. Okay, but I signed it now, you know, and I'm like, well, when is that going to happen? Oh, a few hours, maybe tomorrow never received it so then um on top of that it concerned me that to me was a fraud alert because you're automatically taking my signature and just placing it where else are you going to put it and then you're not a real employee but now they have not only a copy of your driver's license a copy of your social security card not just a copy but scanned into their computer they also have your signature scanned into the computer then they went on to try to sell us insurance you know all these different types of insurance and things like that and I've never heard this before, fraud insurance. They wanted to sell us fraud insurance after they done took our take took our signatures into this automated system that automatically filled in everything. Definite fraud alert. Then on top of that, they're saying the name, the company name that they give, and this is just reporting. This is not this is VSS staffing. And that was the name I thought I heard on the recording, but I was like, I'll just confirm it, you know, when I go. And, you know, I on the way there on the bus, I ran into other people that worked there. And so, and again, all like drug homeless people, you know, and I was just like, you know, is this a staffing agency? Because the name of it is VSS Staffing. And um, the guy was just like, no, um, they do it for... Um, you know, something that's supposed to help you. When I went to the training class, what was said in the training class by the guy that does the training is that the that the reason that they, they created this company because uh, so that they could provide us with insurance. After three months, you get, um, they pay you, they give you insurance. They pay for your insurance or whatever, health insurance and blah, blah, blah. You're not an employee. They created this company so that you could be an independent contractor and they could pay for your insurance. Now, with the vacation sales things, you have a lot of people that come and go. So, you know, and there's other tax breaks and things like that, I'm sure. And they were saying that because they were, they claim to be with Grand, you know, Bahamas or whatever like that. And they were like, the reason that they changed the name and broke off was so they could provide insurance for us. Because it would cost them more to to uh, do the insurance on the Grand Bahamas because they empl employ international people. Didn't make sense to me at all. Because if you are an employee somewhere, then yeah, that would make a difference. But if you're an independent contractor, then it's, then it wouldn't, you know. But it just didn't pan out right to me because you're representing yourself as a staffing agency, but you're not. I mean, just something just didn't seem right about that. But I was like, okay. And then on top of that, then he went on to offer like all these different types of insurance. And he just threw fraud insurance in there. You have me signing this e-signing. You never gave me a copy of it. It automatically fills in the, the signatures. You... And now you're offering me fraud insurance. 
I'm like, what in the world? And so I was really uncomfortable, but I was like, I'll be more at ease when I, you know, and I tried my best to read through it as much as I could. I'll be more at ease once I actually get a copy of it. Never received a copy. That first day was training. What I was advised, what we were advised is that you don't get paid for training unless you work a full five days. So the next day was the first day of quote unquote work. Now, keep in mind, I really needed a job. This place was like three hours away. So I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning to be there at 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So, um, I get to work the next day, and this is a vacation sales place. If y'all have ever worked there at a vacation sales place before, I mean, like I said, all the people that were in the front office, they all seemed cool. But when you get on the floor, it's the exact same thing. Now, you're supposed to, and the thing that's kind of unfortunate is you're so, and I'm glad that I, got, I did get let go. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Um, the thing that's unfortunate is that you're an independent contractor on paper because it behooves them, but but everything is in your name. You know what I mean? And then they had um they have people that get on your phone that are crooks and criminals <laughs> and they would get on the phone and it's one thing if you speak intelligibly to these people that are on the phone. This is a customer that you talked to, that you gave them all the information. But at any time, this person can say, give me the phone. And out of, you're supposed to just give them the phone, even though you're, quote, unquote, an independent contractor. You give them the phone, they didn't hear the person says, this person just jumped on and was just like, what's holding you back? And I was like, we haven't even gotten to that part yet. The woman is like, what are you talking about? You know, what do you mean what's holding you back? And he was like, about the X amount of dollars, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. And she was just like, what are you talking about? How do we go from, you know... A hundred bucks to that, this much, you know, hypothetically speaking. And he just jumped the gun. And the bad thing was that he was supposedly listening to the conversation. So she, she destroyed all credibility, all credibility. And I was is at the point where I'm thinking it's a scam now because how would you do that? You know, why would you do that? Me and her had a good rapport. Why would you do that? And it's not uncommon for that to happen. So I don't know if those people that are doing that, because I've had that happen before, are doing that in, intentionally or not. So I went and I told the person, the person uh, that appeared to be managing the floor, you know, hey, you know, is there any reason that this, could you do me a favor and pull this phone call so that we, you and I can go over it together? Because something happened that I don't quite understand. And he was like, well, ask him why he did it. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that because it's obvious that, to me, it's obvious that it was wrong. And when you ask somebody that's, why did they do something that's obviously wrong, they're going to get offended. They're not going to give you a logical answer because they don't have a logical answer to give. They're going to be offended. And I was like, I would prefer just to listen to it and you go over with me, you know, what that was all about. <laughs> and so he was like, just ask him, you know, it's not a big deal. So I went and I asked the guy, I said, you know, was there any reason that you um, decided to take over that call? And he was like, oh, it sounded like you were losing control of the call. No, not at all. I wasn't. She was asking for her confirmation number for the trip. <laughs> and then you jumped on and was just like, what's holding you back? Nothing was holding her back. She was just waiting for the confirmation number. So he completely blew the deal, you know, and I was just like, you know, how, and benefit of the doubt, how was her asking for a confirmation number? You know, how was, was holding you back an appropriate response to that? There was no answer. And I went back and told the floor manager, you know, what the situation was and asked him to make sure that that call was not deleted because I wanted call, to go over it with quality assurance. Um, I was like, how often are they deleted? And then I could tell he was going to make sure that it was deleted because obviously this guy was his friend, whatever, whatever. So I just wrote a quick note to HR and let them know that, hey, you know, can you make sure this call between 12 and 1230? You know, it's not deleted. I would like to review it with the QA person. And... You, just to make a long story short, because I only got a minute. But basically, what ended up happening, she said she would talk to me at 3 o'clock. Um, right before 3, the guy um, came and got me and said I needed to go to HR. And I was terminated because, quote-unquote, not a good fit. Because there was something that was wrong there. I <laughs> reported it. And then the only thing that I asked for was the names of the person, people that were present. And I knew the front desk person. I knew the director of HR. And there was some other guy there that did not give his information or his title. And it was just all a farce. Like, um, they never sent me the new hire. This has been a week now. The the paperwork so that I can read what it said that I signed. But I, I read most of it. Basically, 
it was confidentiality. This is just a matter of reporting, consumer <laughs> reporting, because if you're going to jobs, you don't want to be in that situation. Not to say there's a lot of people 